Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's time for our next hot topic, and this one talks about Labour presents seven demands, including state and local police creation. Now, the Nigerian Labour Congress has listed seven demands from the federal government ahead of the May 1, 2024 Workers' Day. Aside from demanding for a new minimum wage, the NLC is also asking for the creation of state and local government police to tackle insecurity in the country. The Congress also stated, well stressed, that the states and local governments, as well as the organized private sector, must pay the new minimum wage when it's eventually approved. Joining us to have a conversation is Biodun Shoumi. He's a political analyst. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. Thank you for having me. All right. So Labour has made about seven um, demands, one of which is um, the creation of local and state police. They've also requested for the new minimum wage, um, which is about 615,000 Naira, as well as other demands. What do you think of this demand by the NLC to the federal government? Uh, yes. Um, in the first instance, the, some of the issues are already under consideration. For instance, the issue of the minimum wage mm -hmm. um, in line with law, the new minimum wage is expected to kick in from 1st of April. Now it's obvious um, it's going to get backdated somehow. Um, but the fact of the matter is, I cannot see the NSC achieving its demand of 600,000, mm -hmm. uh, uh, 615,000 as minimum wage in Nigeria. It will not achieve it. When you look at the percentage inflation upgrade, um, are we saying that from 30,000 naira minimum, we are going to 615,000? Is that, does that reflect the true percentage increment or the, um, the undervaluing of our salaries or the downward spiral of the, of the value of, um, salaries in Nigeria? No, in my view, when you look at the fuel subsidy removal, that, that only brought in 250%. Um, inflation upgrade. Yes, plus some other measures taken by government. We are looking at about 300% inflation upgrade, um, or thereabout, 320, thereabout. Now, how then do we justify, you know, an increment of over 600%, uh, you know, 2,000%? There is no way anybody can justify that. And there is no way how any economy will support that, except we want to create worthless papers so that people will be carrying around. In the first instance, uh, in the second instance, we also need to remember that prices of other items will For instance, landlord would increase spread by the same percentage um, uh, inflation upgrades um, if I were to pay for. So the economy cannot support what the is demanding in terms of that. I think realistically, looking at certain at about 120%, uh, 120,000 uh, minimum wage or 90,000, something around that figure. But to demand for 600,000 plus, the economy cannot take it. It's also going to lead to spiral inflation. The inflation will get out of hand. We won't be able to manage it. We will end up becoming something like Zimbabwe. That is not what we want with our currency. And I'm sure many Nigerians will not want that. Mm -hmm. The other aspects of their demands, like CNG buses, yes, they are very reasonable demands because these are measures agreed by the federal government, we should have been in place, but it takes time for these CNG buses to manufacture that. And from all indications, if you have to believe the federal government, some of these buses will start getting into the country in May. That's good news. Mm -hmm. Then we also look at the other demands for state police in order to deal with the security situation. No doubt many people are concerned about the security situation. If you look at the bed basket of the country being wasted, you know, it's, it's, it, they are highly, their productivity has been disrupted, you know, by security problems, uh, partly from, um, those who are, um, trying to graze, you know, do open grazing and also partly by some other factors. So government needs to seriously, you know, take in, this into consideration and ensure that in order to achieve the food production objective of the federal government so that we can be self-sufficient then they need to do something urgently. And I'm glad that many people are now clamoring for state police, including those who traditionally were opposed to state police, are now asking. The federal policing system has not been effective sufficiently to address this problem. 
That is why you see the military being called to, to, to join in internal police when they have no such rules. But well, having state police would ensure that those who know the locality are the ones policing that locality and they're able to meet crime in the world better than what we have for Okay, so let's for, let's take them in parts. So the first part is the minimum wage of hundred of six hundred and fifteen thousand naira. Well, you have said maybe ninety to one hundred and twenty thousand naira would suffice. But then, if we look at the inflation in our country and we see how it has gone up, you know, month after month, it's quite alarming. And so, do you think that people will be able to? Um, you know, fend with about 90,000 Naira, if you were to just to, you know, appraise it, do you think 90,000 Naira a month is okay for a family, for people to be able to fend for themselves? So now, um, given that you have to probably pay your rent, you have to put food on your table. Um, if you don't have kids, well, good for you. If you have kids, you have to pay your school fees. You have to pay transportation to your workplace. I know this is like the minimum, but let's just start with that. Is 90,000 Naira enough in this economy for someone to be able to fend for themselves? Yes. When, the way wages are calculated is not based on um, just wishful thinking or just a word. Mm. Go to any crime. Wages are usually tied to inflation operates. Um, I don't want to go so far as uh, talking about other countries in Africa. Let's look at even developed crimes that have the resources that can afford to pay any amount of them. Take Britain, for instance. Mm. If inflation is 5% um, in any given year, then they would uh, negotiate and pay the 5%. In some cases, the pay awards are less than that in order to curb inflation. Otherwise, every single thing to the cost of paying salaries will be added to the cost of products, you know, um, um, being produced. And invariably, what it means is cost of goods and services will go up. We will be less competitive, you know, with our goods because they'll become so expensive. The same thing in the agricultural sector. If you increase salaries or wages by unreasonable percentage, more than the level of inflation, what will happen is the farmers will have the extra cost of producing those, those goods, you know, to the cost of their poultry products or, or maize or whatever, or cassava. And then again, they will become so expensive. So what you are dealing with one woman mm. will be taken back, you know, with another hand. Landlord will increase their rent. If you look at the minimum wage of 30,000 currently, how many states are paying it? Not all the states. Mm. And we don't want to increase it by 2,000%. 2,000%? Do we have inflation of rate of even 500% in the country? There cannot be any real economic justification mm. for it. Labor has to do what they have to do. It's when it comes to pay bargaining, labor can come up with any figure. They can say, like they said before, we need 1 million naira minimum wage yeah. you know, for workers to get paid. But it is within negotiations and economic realities that a figure will be agreed against inflation operate. We cannot just say, oh, because things are hard, so let us pay everybody one million naira each, mm -hmm. uh, minimum wage. It's not going to work. Mm -hmm. It does not work like that. Because all the, the one million naira will again get taken back from the workers to increase in the cost of goods and services. And then we need to bear this in mind. The schools that we're talking about, teachers, school, schools will have to pay the same to charge 615,000 minimum wage. Mm. They're going to hand it to the cost of education. So workers will never gain through that, except we take it to inflation operate. If inflation is 300%, then we should be demanding for 300%, you know, a salary increase, rather than asking for 2,000% as in this situation. We, we, I, I mean, I totally understand you. And I mean, something I've even said is 615. In fact, 1 million is a far stretch. How do you go from 30,000 Naira to 1 million Naira? And now that they've, you know, come out to say, okay, we want 615,000 Naira. Well, it's still it, a huge chunk has been removed, but I'm not sure if the federal government can do that. And like you rightly pointed out, even the 30,000 Naira, how many states, there's states that are still owing salaries and it's just 30,000 Naira. So think about what will happen if you say 600,000 Naira. That means no one is going to get paid, really. And what are we going to do with all of the monies? Because guess what? The, the lives that you're saying you want to improve might not just get improved at all. 
And 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 one, yes, one thing I've always said about minimum wage is it doesn't even matter what it is as long as you know all of the basic necessities are being met. If we have um, good health care, if we have good infrastructure, if we have a good transport system, if we have all of these things in place, I think even if it was ten thousand naira it still would be fine because you can afford everything that you need and you know all of the basic necessities are already provided for you but in this case most times nigerians have to provide every single thing for themselves and that's why you know a, a good minimum wage would actually help now i don't know if whatever the government is you know trying to prefer um put on the table but we need something that is substantial enough in as much as we need something that is substantial, we also need something that's sustainable to be able to pay, you know, to these workers. And like we said, it's just a minimum wage. So it, that means it starts from there. So now moving over to the fact of state police, I mean, a lot of people have been clamoring for this, but then there is still the other um, parts where people have certain reservations. And this is talking about the autonomy from the governors saying, you know, if the governors, you know, just take over um, these affairs, then that means they might be able to abuse power. What do you think are the pros and cons of this state police? And is this something we should definitely welcome? Uh, yes. Uh, the issue of state police is uh, very clear. We used to have what they call them. Um, we, we used to have a decentralized police force. Maybe many people have forgotten in the 60s. Mm. You know, following independence, we had the centralized police force um, at a point. And in fact, when you look at the presidential system of government, which we are practicing, if you go to the United States of America, which we have tried very hard to mirror uh, in terms of our political structure and state organization, you realize that even in America, a university can have their own campus police, is allowed under federalism, if you're practicing through federalism. That's what they call local government police. You know, to only police that look at government. Um, then, um, for instance, if you're in America, uh, say, for instance, we are driving on I-95, that's Interstate 95, you can get pulled up, you know, by federal police if you contravene the law, maybe you're overspeeding or something. Yeah. And when you move on to state police, if you violate the law also, um, state and territory, if you violate the law also, within federal rules, then the state police will arrest you. You know, if you violate any crime. So they are very, very clear functions. It does not mean that federal policing system would be destroyed. No. What it simply, simply means is that additional forces will be provided, you no know, tailored to each state's needs. Currently, uh, we are supposed to have about two or two million uh, police officers, you know, policing the country. What do we have? We have less than just about 400,000, and with about 150,000 of them doing private security guard jobs and also um, carrying bags and all that and doing paperwork in the offices. So we don't really have the boys on the beat, you know, to fight crime. So introducing state police will bring in a situation where you have not only more police officers to police the country, it will also enhance their, their efficiency because you will have people who know each neighborhood, you know, in charge of the security of those people. Currently, the DPO or any police officer can be transferred from Maiduguri to Portacourt. What does it mean by Portacourt? It will take time before you can get a proper grasp, you know, of the security situation there. And, you know, the, 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 the demography and also the, the topography of the whole area, it will take, take him some time. And that is not helpful. It's totally different from if you appoint somebody from Portacourt or from River State, you know, as a DPO, in charge of river state. So these are some of the problems which we have. Then we've also seen the increase in banditry and uh, that we've not been able to deal with them. The bandits are in the bush, you know, in each um, state, you know, hiding in the bush and robbing people and making life intolerable. Kidnapping is on the rise. So we need people who understand the local geography of every state, you know, to be on the ground to deal with this situation. So I, I think um, the case is very clear for state police. I understand some people are conscious of the fact that some governors can choose to abuse it. But yeah. currently, that happens. If you remember the case of um, a journalist um, who was arrested, I think he's a uh, publisher of Cross River Watch, you know, on the orders of the governor, Ayade, yeah. when he was governor, 
That was, he got the federal police to arrest him. And then he was tried, eventually freed. So, uh, look, whether under federal policing or state policing, <laughs> you know, at least this can always happen. Yeah. But we should also understand that many of the states are already funding one arm or the other of the Nigerian police force. In Lagos State, yeah. you have got the collar arrest in the state, key, pres key response for key arrest. In different states, they are called different things. So, yeah. what will change? Nothing. The governments are already buying, you know, groups, they, they are buying. Uh, ammo vehicles, they are buying guns for the police force and bullets. So, mm. uh, what will change? Not much will change, other than you have a more efficient, you know, police force, more people on the ground to deal with crime. Mm. Uh, they will know the neighborhood, will now be the ones dealing with crime in each neighborhood. The Nigerian police force will be more accountable, you know, when you have state policing system. So, they will concentrate on um, federal offenses and federal issues like mm. federal police, rather than um, concentrating on the state um, problems. Mm -hmm. Where the state cannot provide you know, state police, of course the federal policing system will still be involved. And in any case, uh, I have about a proposal to ensure that governors are not able to abuse state police. Oh. In the first instance, when you have a state commissioner of police will be empowered, you know, to if he thinks the instruction is unlawful, he will not necessarily carry it out. Oh, but okay. the state police service commission Mm. will not have the overall say to determine whether that action is lawful or not. So there are safeguards that can be built into this to ensure that we are able to deal with, with crime while at the same time avoid misuse of state police. All right, that's a good way to wrap it up here. I want to say thank you for coming. We hope that, um, you know, all of the safeguards that you've said, you know, would just be put in place so that there is no abuse of power. And then uh, the security um, for Nigeria is paramount even with the federal government. Thank you for coming, Mr. Biodo. It was lovely having a conversation with you. Thank you for having me. All right. We've been speaking with Biodun Shoumi, a political analyst, and we're talking about the demands from the NLC to the federal government. Well, they've made seven demands, including the creation of state and local police and obviously the minimum wage as well. This is where we have to wrap it up on the show today. It's been lovely having the breakfast with you. My name is Rome Paulson. I'll see you again tomorrow. Have a lovely day.